namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Narayanam namaskritya Naram chayva narutamam Devim Saraswatim Yasam Tato Jaya Mudiraye Nashta Praeshva Badrishu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatyutama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtiki Yam pravrajanta manupeta mapeta kritiam Dvaipayana virahakata rajuhava Putreti tan mayatayo taravo binedus Tam sarva bhuta hridayam munimana tosmi So since the topic of today's uh, lecture <coughs> or talk is preaching. I will read two verses and uh, purports of Srila Prabhupada in which he encapsulates the essence of preaching from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the last verse from the third uh, chapter and the first verse from the fourth chapter. I'll just read the verses without repeating them. Tatra kirtayato vipra viprasher buritejya saha aham chadhyagamam tatra nivishtas tatanugrahat soham vah shravayishyami yathadhitam yathamati Tatra, there, Kirtayataha, while reciting, Vipraha, O Brahmanas, Viprarshehe, from the great Brahmana Rishi, Bhuri, greatly, Tejasaha, powerful. Aham, I, Cha, also, Adhyagamam, could understand, Tatra, in that meeting, Nivishtaha, being perfectly attentive, Tatanugrahat, by his mercy, Saha, that very thing. Aham, I. Vaha, unto you. Shravaishyami, shall let you hear. Yatha adhitam, yatha mati, as far as my realization goes. <clears throat> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. O learned Brahmanas, when Shukadeva Goswami recited Bhagavatam there in the presence of Emperor Parikshit, I heard him with rapt attention. And thus, by his mercy, I learned the Bhagavatam from that great and powerful sage. Now I shall try to make you hear the very same thing as I learned it from him and as I have realized it. Purport. One can certainly see directly the presence of Lord Shri Krishna in the pages of Bhagavatam if one has heard it from, this, from a self-realized great soul like Sukadeva Goswami. 
One cannot, however, learn Bhagavatam from a bogus hired reciter whose aim, whose aim of life is to earn some money out of such recitation and employ the earning in sex indulgence. No one can learn Srimad Bhagavatam who is associated with persons engaged in sex life. <laughs> uh, that is the secret of learning Srimad Bhagavatam. Nor uh, can one learn Bhagavatam from one who interprets the text by his mundane scholarship. One has to learn Bhagavatam from the representative of Sukadeva Goswami and no one else if one at all wants to see Lord Sri Krishna in the pages. That is the process and there is no alternative. Sutta Goswami is a bona fide representative of Sukadeva Goswami because he wants to present the message which he received from the great learned Brahmana Sukadeva Goswami, uh, the, from the great learned Brahmana. Sukadeva Goswami presented Bhagavatam as he heard it from his great father. And so also Sutta Goswami presenting Bhagavatam as he had heard it from Sukadeva Goswami. Simply hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word nivishta means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of Bhagavatam through his ears. That is the real process of receiving Bhagavatam. One should hear it with rapt attention from the real person and then he can at once realize the presence of Lord Krishna in every page. The secret of knowing Bhagavatam is mentioned here. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. Uh, but somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person uh, at the very beginning, he can assuredly see Lord Sri Krishna in person in the pages of Bhagavatam. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purpose of the first canto, third chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Krishna is the source of all incarnation. And then Srila Prabhupada continues the same topic in the next verse, the first verse of the fourth chapter, appearance of Sri Narada, Vyasu Vacha, Eti Bruvanam, Samstutya, Muninam, Dirga, Shatrinam, Vridhah, Kulapatih, Sutam, Bach, Richach, Shonako, Bravit. On hearing Sutta Goswami speak thus, Shonaka Muni, who was the elderly learned uh, leader of all the rishis engaged in the prolonged sacrificial ceremony, congratulated Sutta Goswami by addressing him as follows, purported by Srila Prabhupada. In the meeting of learned men, when there, is, uh, when there are congratulations or addresses for the speaker, the qualification of the congratulator should be as follows. He must be the leader of uh, the house and an elderly man. So she Goro Hari doesn't fit this, uh, Suvarna Goro Hari doesn't fit this description. He congratulated me, but <laughs> he's not an elderly man, <laughs> but the leader of this house, it's okay. <laughs> he must be vastly learned also. Sri Shonakarishi had all these qualifications and thus he stood up to congratulate Sri Sutta Goswami when he expressed his desire to present Srimad Bhagavatam exactly as he heard it from Sukadeva Goswami and also realized it personally. Personal realization does not mean that one should out of vanity attempt to show one's own learning by trying to surpass the previous Acharya. He must have full confidence in the previous Acharya and at the same time he must realize the subject matter so nicely that he can present the matter 
for the particular circumstances in a suitable manner. The original purpose of the text must be maintained. No obscure meaning should be screwed out uh, of it, yet it should be presented in an interesting manner for the understanding of the audience. This is called realization. The leader of the assembly, Shonaka, could estimate the value of the speaker, Sri Sutta Goswami, simply by uh, uttering yathaditam yathamati, and therefore uh, he was very glad to congratulate him in ecstasy. No learned man should be willing to hear a person who does not represent the original Acharya. So the speaker and the audience were bona fide in this meeting where Bhagavatam uh, was being recited for the second time. That should be the standard of recitation of Bhagavatam so that the real purpose can be served without difficulty. Unless the situation is created, Bhagavatam recitation for extraneous purposes is useless labor, both for the speaker and for the audience. Srila Prabhupada ki Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakal Patarudesha Kripa Sindhu Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda Sri Advaita Gadathara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ajano Vandita Pujoka Nakavadato Sankirtanai Kapitaru Kamalai Daksha Vishwambaro Dvijavaro Yugadharma Pala Mande Jagat Priyakaro Karunavadharo Yantah Pravishya Mamavachim Mam Prasuptam Sanji Vayata Kila Shakti Daraswadam Nanyam Shahasta Charana Shravanat Vaganim Prananda Mamukavate Purushaya Tudu Svasyastu Vishwasya Kala Prasidatam Dayantu Bhutani Shivam Mithodi Yamanas Chapadram Bajatata Doksha Javishitam No Mati Hatyahai Tuki So, thank you very much for coming all together <clears throat> and discussing this very important matter, how to preach, especially to the young audience of Bangalore. We're actually dealing with the warlike situation. Kali equipped with all the powerful weapons, is fighting against Sanatana Dharma. <laughs> and uh, in most of the places already Kali is victorious. <laughs> I heard once a very interesting realization is that this Kali Yuga is very special Kali Yuga because the degradation in this Kali Yuga is very fast. <laughs> in previous Kali Yugas, it was a slow kind of progress, but this Kali Yuga is very special because Lord Chaitanya came and he expedited the whole thing. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's very difficult to imagine what's going to happen uh, the rest of the Kali Yuga because it's already so horrible. <laughs> so, 400,000 years is still <laughs> ahead of us. <laughs> and it's already degraded to the maximum extent. <laughs> How it can be more degraded, it's difficult to imagine. Of course, it's possible to imagine, but <laughs> it's, it's really difficult. So Lord Chaitanya, he kind of catalyzed the whole process of degradation because he wanted also to give something very important and very valuable. 
And there is a fight going on. There is a Kurukshetra war uh, between the forces of Kali, very powerful forces of Kali. Now, when the internet was invented, you know, the Kali became much more powerful because the false propaganda, which is the main uh, target of Kali. Kali is targeting the last leg of religion. Other legs of religion already finished. Who is, who is doing tapasya nowadays? Nobody is doing tapasya. <laughs> who, is, who is truthful? Well, truthful, some people are still trying. <laughs> uh, who, is, who is pure? Nobody is pure. So this last leg of religion is, is, is people are trying still to hold for the truth. So when the internet was invented, and uh, this last leg of religion uh, was given a, uh, you know, a really final blow. <laughs> it was a really heavy uh, victory from the age of Kali because now the whole falsity, the falsity of the essence of life is being spread by internet. What is the falsity? You know, the, the, the internet is spreading certain concepts which are false. Asat, something which is not real, something which doesn't have uh, the real importance or real lasting uh, influence uh, upon us. This is what is being spread, you know. Even if you read the news and the internet, you know, the news became so easily available. Before, at least, you had to open the, you know, the newspaper and, you know, go through newspaper. Now, no need, you know, just push one button. <laughs> and you know everything which is happening in America. And, and you can spend the whole day just by reading what is happening in Brazil. <laughs> As if it has anything to do with you. <laughs> but this is the, this is how the mind works. When, uh, when uh, Yaksha asked Maharaja Yudhishthira, what is the news? Uh, that was one of the last questions of Yaksha. Please tell us what is the news. And Maharaja Yudhishthira said, here is the news. If you know this news, you know all the news which are there. You don't have to read all this news because the news are all the same. He said, this world is a big port with boiling ghee in it, or oil in it. And everyone is being fried in this pot. And there is a very good cook who is trying to make us evenly fried from all the sides. You know, like a good cook is, is frying pakoras, you know, and pakoras should be evenly fried from all sides. So this cook is called thyme. So, <laughs> this cook time is, is cooking us. It's cooking everyone in this world. So, no need to see the news. This is what is going on. Everyone is being nicely cooked <laughs> in this world. <laughs> so, that's, that's the news. But people are attracted by all this news. It's presented in a very attractive manner. The falsity of the internet is that it presents any garbage in a very attractive manner. To make your mind uh, completely captivated uh, by this garbage. And, uh, you know, you're taking all this energy inside yourself. You know, there is so much negativity in the internet. And when we're reading uh, all this news and everything else, what is happening, all this negative energy. And Kali Yuga is actually, uh, you know, it's, it's surcharged with negative energy. Everything is just penetrated by negativity, by, by the quarrels, by hypocrisy. Everything is... And when we read all this news, you know, all this negative energy goes inside. And then we spread this negative, the same sort of negative energy, and we become Kali Chelas. You know, people read all the kind of gossips. Uh, this happened or that happened. Uh, this 
you know, this person fell down, that person fell down, you know. The, what, what, what is so interesting about it? Yeah, everyone has fallen in this age. <laughs> what is new about it? <laughs> no, but you, you want to know the d- details. How he is fallen. <laughs> You're not satisfied with the fact that everyone is fallen. You, you want to know the details. Why you want to know details? Because you are fallen yourself. Because you have the same affinity with the same sort of garbage and you want to, you know, recharge your garbage. It's already a little exhausted, so you <laughs> want to get the new portion of garbage in, uh, in this way. So that's going on. That's the battle. <laughs> and uh, here we are, you know, a few strange souls. <laughs> who are trying to fight against this Kali Yuga. And therefore, uh, this preaching is very important. We are trying to use the same internet, we are trying to use everything, you know, to fight against this, the flow of Kali Yuga. And it's very difficult. And sometimes we become also wounded in this battle. So therefore, and Prabhupada was alone. Prabhupada, he actually declared the war against Kali, and he was basically alone. Nobody helped him. And here he explains uh, how, what, what is our weapon? The weapon of Kali is very clear. Uh, there are so many weapons. Uh, he is equipped, well equipped with all this lies and sense gratification and uh, all the drugs which are there. This is all weapons of Kali. What do we have? We have only one weapon. This is Shiman Bhagavad. Well, we have two weapons, Bhagavad Gita also. (laughs) We have this, this weapons to fight against this powerful uh, weapons of uh, the age of Kali, but we also have to understand that this is the most powerful weapons which we have. Srila Prabhupada gave, gave us these weapons, his books. That's, that's his understanding of how we can stand against the uh, overwhelming forces of Kali, his books. And his realization, his understanding, uh, which is coming through Parampara system. Srila Prabhupada explains this very beautifully. Why it is so powerful? Because it's as it is, Yadharup. <laughs> because it doesn't, uh, he didn't uh, adulterate the original purpose of the text. What other people were doing. Um, before him, uh, there were many preachers. Vivekananda came to Chicago and he preached, uh, you know, Vedanta. And he impressed people very much. Western people were very much impressed by Vivekananda. But ultimately we know that uh, he didn't give the original purpose. You know, his idea was it's better to play football than than to study Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> That's his quote-unquote, his direct statement. <laughs> so, he, he, you know, he preached Vedic literature, but what is his understanding of Vedic literature? With all due respect, you know, he is a great leader according to certain powerful movements in, in India, but, uh, you know, if he thinks that to play football is more valuable than to read Bhagavad Gita. So, what he can preach? What he can say? How he can convey the message of Bhagavad Gita, you know? Everyone who hears him will play football after hearing Bhagavad Gita because that's the hidden message which is, <laughs> which is in his preaching, <laughs> you know? And here we have Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, again, with all due respect, but, you know, that's his own words. 
the system of parampara is that somebody who is preaching has to be realized first. He has to realize the message, what is he preaching. Otherwise, what is he preaching? Otherwise, the preaching will be uh, just, uh, just an exploitation of innocent people. Like Prabhupada said, you know, there are so many hired reciters of Bhagavatam or preachers of Bhagavad Gita who have extraneous purposes, not to convey the message. Prabhupada was very proud, you know, somebody says, uh, how he can call his book Bhagavad Gita as it is? <laughs> but he's insisting, this is as it is. Because I do not have any extraneous, extraneous motive. The purity of purpose is the most important first thing and first uh, uh, condition which we have to have. What is my purpose? What is my motivation? <clears throat> That's the first thing. And to have the pure motivation, we have to realize these truths which are there in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, uh, naturally, we are, you know, the, the built-in motivations which we have are impure. After living so many lifetimes in this world, in this Kali Yuga, uh, we have completely twisted motivations. We selfish, we are selfish, we want, you know, and, and whatever we do, even if we are preaching, uh, if we are not pure in our preaching, if we didn't realize this message, the motivation will transpire through our preaching. We will look at the person whom we preach, you know, what he, as a resource, not as a spirit soul who is naturally connected with Krishna. The motivation will not be pure. So the first and foremost, the most important uh, condition uh, for the uh, preacher, uh, he should be realized. And realization means reading these books, uh, uh, which we received from Srila Prabhupada, and uh, uh, trying to really not only read these books, but also live these books. <laughs> there was a story then, like one person approached Srila Prabhupada and proudly in Bombay and said, you know, Swamiji, I can recite Bhagavad Gita within 45 minutes, within one muhurta. You know, because supposedly, according to the uh, historians, uh, Krishna recited Bhagavad Gita within one muhurta. It was relatively short time, so it must be quite a fast speaking <laughs> exercise. So this person said, you want to hear, I can recite Bhagavad Gita within 40 minutes or 42 minutes or whatever muhurta is. And Prabhupada said, yes, very good, very good, very good. Can you leave Bhagavad Gita for one minute? It's one thing to recite Bhagavad Gita. It's one thing to recite the shlokas of Bhagavad Gita, uh, which we learned just for preaching. Another thing is uh, to leave Bhagavad Gita. And it's more difficult to leave Bhagavad Gita uh, just one minute. <laughs> than to uh, recite Bhagavad Gita within 45 minutes or 42 minutes or whatever it is. Because, uh, I mean, it's a heavy duty to, to, to live Bhagavad Gita. It means that we have to be very pure in our motivation. And uh, Prabhupada explains this whole uh, process. Uh, he explains that for that, we need to hear very attentively. The point number one which Prabhupada is making here, uh, before, before we start preaching, before we open our mouths, <laughs> we first have to hear again and again and again. How to hear with rapt attention? Nivishtaha. We have to be nivishtaha, and Prabhupada explains what does it mean nivishtaha. It means that we have to drink this with uh, our ears. Like 
Сила Диви Госвами, he explains when the, when the cows in Vrindavan, when they heard the uh, sound of Krishna's flute, you know, there were these gear cows with long uh, ears hanging. Uh, so they somehow or other, they, they would raise the ears <laughs> because they wanted to hear every sound, every little sound, and the, their ears would become like pots. <laughs> uh, they wanted to uh, drink the sound of Krishna's flute because of this eagerness to hear. So, you know, luckily for us, we don't have to really make these endeavors to put our, our ears up. They're already up. You know, it would be very difficult if our ears <laughs> would be like gear cuffs. <laughs> so... Uh, we have already our ears up. Unfortunately, they are sometimes closed due to inattentiveness, due to the, uh, some natural faults of our mind. What is inattentiveness? Inattentiveness is dosha, dosha of the mind. Because the mind is very much uh, flickering, the mind is always wandering, you know, it uh, it's oftentimes is not connected with the uh, sound. For us to understand something, first of all, there has to be uh, contact of the sense with the sense object, of the sense with sound, and the contact of the sense object with the mind. And then the contact of the mind with the soul. <laughs> this is the process, this is the chain. There is a sense object, the sound. The sound has to be connected with the, uh, with the sense object. The sense object has to be connected with the mind, and the mind has to be connected with the soul. And because the mind is so distracted, uh, you know, the, the, what is inattentiveness? Inattentiveness is this uh, phenomena when uh, our mind is not connected with the sense, which is perceiving certain sense object. And because the mind is somewhere else, you know, and because the mind always wants to be somewhere else, that's a very peculiar um, feature of our mind. The mind always wants to do something else. It doesn't matter what he's doing now, something else. When he will do something else, he will want to do something else. So, <laughs> it's an illusion. If you are sitting and chanting, you think, you know, let me stand up and chant. And then when you stand up and chant, you think, let me walk and chant. And then you think, let me run and chant. <laughs> you know, the mind is always not satisfied with what he is doing at the moment. The mind somehow or other hates to be at present. He always wants to do something else. He's always in the future. I'm sitting and chanting and I'm thinking what I will do next week and uh, what I will do when I go somewhere. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the nature of the mind. And therefore the mind is inattentive. It's very difficult to concentrate the mind in what, what we're doing. You know, we're sitting here now. Therefore Prabhupada said, uh, you know, it's, it's very good when you preach because at least when you preach you're attentive. When you hear, you may not be attentive. But when you preach, it's, it's difficult to be inattentive when you preach. Unless you start speaking some mundane news and your, <laughs> your thought process goes somewhere else. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that inattentiveness is, is, a, natural, is a natural flow of the uh, dosha of the mind. And therefore, the first thing which we have to train ourselves is to be attentive when we hear, is to be attentive when we read. Prabhupada says, it's difficult to be attentive. He gives the whole chain how, why people are not attentive, why the mind is so distracted. <clears throat> he speaks about this, but he says, if somehow or other you're attentive, it basically means that somehow or other, despite of all this 
difficulties of Kali Yuga and bad influences, all contaminating influences which are influencing our mind and make our mind inattentive. Uh, somehow or other, we still can make it attentive for a short period of time. Therefore, uh, lectures should not be too long because, you know, uh, if it's too long, it's very difficult to be attentive. <laughs> But if for a short time we manage to do it, it's already a great achievement. So if we're talking about uh, the uh, preaching, you know, it is said that uh, Prabhupada's lectures always 30 minutes, 35 minutes, not more than this. You know, nowadays somebody speaks for five hours, six hours. <laughs> And it's such a torture to <laughs> see for so long. Even if it's nice, still it's difficult. But Prabhupada was very, very particular in this regard. He, he never gave very long lectures. Why? Because the span of attentiveness is, is short. You know, naturally the span of attentiveness of uh, the audience, especially nowadays, you know, if, if you can be attentive for, if somehow or other you can be attentive for 30 minutes, it's the greatest achievement in your life. Congratulations. <laughs> if for 30 minutes you still can, uh, you know, keep your attention or your mind on the subject matter. So, <clears throat> and it's possible, even though naturally our mind is inattentive, Prabhupada, he, he finishes this. He says, if somehow or other uh, one hears with rapt attention from the right person, at the very beginning, uh, one can assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada stresses this amazing point. If with attentiveness, with concentration, we can hear, the realization will come. It's a very, very important point. Uh, it is explained uh, by Srila Jiva Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in, in the commentaries of, uh, in their commentaries of uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. They say, Shravana Dvara Kinchit Anubhuti Sati. Just by hearing, you can get realization. You can get experience. Hearing is such a powerful process that it gives you realization. Usually we know that this is, you know, so first of all, Atma Varya uh, You have to realize God. So what is the process which uh, uh, Upanishad gives, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Atma Varya Drashtavyam, Shrotavyam, Shrotavyaha, Mantavyaha, Nididyasitavyaha. So the, the normal process of realization, you can only see God, you can only see Atma, God, uh, when you hear first, and then you think for a long time, Mananam, you do this Mananam, and then Nididyasitaviyam, you, you start meditating. You heard first, uh, you uh, thought, a, a lot about this whole thing, and then uh, you will see God in, you will see how it works, you will see the truth, uh, you know, and then after that, uh, you will be able to experience God. But Srila Jiva Goswami says this amazing thing. He says, Shravana Dvara Kinchit Anubhuti Sati. Little uh, experience will come just by hearing. If you hear properly, that's the first thing which we have to understand. If the hearing process, as Prabhupada says, is proper, if you hear from the right person, and if you hear with right attention, with rapt attention, uh, with, with a lot of concentration, then this is an easy, simple, and very quick way to get realization. <laughs> You may realize very highly elevated topics just by hearing, uh, without going through this, uh, you know, difficult process of uh, practicing everything. So therefore, uh, the hearing is the first thing which the preacher should do. He should train his mind 
how to hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam properly, how to really drink the message of Srimad Bhagavatam with the ears. This is, uh, as Prabhupada explains, this is the uh, meaning of this word, nivishtaha, nivishtaha, nitaram uh, vishtaha. Ni vishtaha. Vish, the uh, Sanskrit dhatu, vish means to enter. And ni means nitaram, nitaram vishtaha. It means that it completely enters. When we hear, you know, we all know there is some wax in our ears naturally being produced. There is some, something so it blocks the ears. It just doesn't penetrate the wax. <laughs> so, nivishta means you first have to clear up your ears <laughs> from all the dirt which is there. And what is the dirt? The dirt is, it's not literally this wax. The dirt is the other things which we heard. <laughs> because we heard so many other things. When we hear the pure message of Srimad Bhagavatam, it just, it just doesn't go so nicely. Nitaram uh, vishtaha means it goes nicely through the, uh, through the ears. There is no blockage there. <laughs> so, uh, but if there is a lot of stuff which we heard, you know, we hear something, we heard here, there, you know, from different, like Prabhupada said, that the first thing we have to hear from the self-realized person, from the proper person, from the proper source, and because we heard so many other things from improper sources, then it's difficult. The message doesn't go deep. It doesn't penetrate this blockage. So this is the first uh, most important thing which we have to understand. Uh, that uh, if we want to preach, we first have to hear again and again with proper attention, uh, trying to really um, purify our ears from the dirt. And it means limit our uh, association with the dirty things of this Kali Yuga. It means really be very careful uh, with what we are, uh, you know, uh, taking in. There is a very uh, good saying, which is very appropriate to speak in uh, Bangalore, because Bangalore is the headquarter of the IT industry. And uh, IT engineers, they have the saying, garbage in, garbage out. So that's exactly about our situation. If garbage goes in, the garbage will go out. You know, I remember in the very beginning, uh, there was, you know, when devotees were not so experienced, uh, they didn't really know how to, you know, speak from the Shastras. So they would, they would start something from the verse uh, of, of Bhagavad Gita, but very quickly go to something which is more familiar, with some subject matter which was more familiar. So I remember one devotee, uh, his schedule was to give a lecture once every two weeks or something like this. And every time he would start speaking, he, he would start from the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, but every time uh, during his lecture, somehow or other, he would start speaking about Pearl Harbor, how the Americans uh, or my Jap Japanese uh, attacked Pearl Harbor. Somehow or other, it was so exciting for him. And um, uh, already all the audience, you know, while he would start his lecture, waiting when the Pearl Harbor story <laughs> will come up. So that's the illustration. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you get some, something, <laughs> Uh, which is not so pure, then you will naturally speak. You will speak about something which is exciting for you. If you're excited about something, uh, so then you will, uh, you will speak about this. And it's sometimes difficult to be excited about Krishna. Believe it or not. <laughs> you know? 
it's sometimes difficult to be excited about the message of Bhagavad Gita or message of Bhagavatam, but this is the result of proper hearing. If we hear properly, with proper attention, then we will be excited about Srimad Bhagavatam. Then we will be enthusiastic. This is what Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. Uh, he says, in, uh, uh, he's explaining this first uh, word of, uh, um, of uh, the verse, Utsaha Nishaya Dariyat. He says, Utsaha, what does Utsaha mean? And Utsaha means excitement. Utsaha means enthusiasm. He said, where the enthusiasm is coming from? He said, the enthusiasm is coming from the faith. If you have faith, if you have shraddha, then you will be enthusiastic. There is no meaning of faith. If, if you say, I believe in Krishna, and you are not enthusiastic. You know, sometimes people, they, uh, they speak about Krishna, sitting in the Vyasasana, and they, you know, they bore themselves. They are not excited about the subject matter <laughs> which they are talking. It's just a ritual. <laughs> they, just, they just have to speak about this. And uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, what is the meaning of your shraddha if you are not enthusiastic? The essence of, uh, of uh, faith is enthusiasm. This is exactly what uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati said, if you have life, uh, you will have to preach, you know, if you have enthusiasm, if you have energy, you know, and uh, if you say, I believe in Krishna, I believe in Bhagavad Gita, and you're not excited about it, it means that you not really believe in it. There is no real uh, connection between your mind with the subject matter of Bhagavad Gita or, or Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, but this, this can be obtained if you hear with rapt attention. That's the first thing. This realization can come if you hear with rapt attention. Because we all know on this phenomenon uh, that uh, when we, uh, you know, sometimes we hear certain things and we hear it again and again and again and we always say, you know, oh, I know it's so boring. I already know this, I know I'm not this body. And then somebody else comes, and you have your bright moment, you're somehow as attentive, and somebody speaks the thing which you already know, and which you already heard thousands of times. And somehow or other, it clicks. This particular person somehow or other said something to you which you supposedly knew, but now uh, the different, different experiences there. Something happened because what he said went through. So that's how preaching works. If we want to preach, we have to be realized. Otherwise, it will be just formality and people will not be changed after, the, after our preaching. What is the purpose of our preaching? The purpose of our preaching is uh, to, uh, you know, to try to help another person to change their heart. And for that, you know, what is the means which we have? We have only one means, our tongue. You know, this is what the means which we have. Uh, and by tongue, by the powerful sound, we can change the heart of a person. But for that, of course, we need to be pure ourselves. And Prabhupada says, he explains that uh, to, be, um, to have the attentive mind, we have to be pure, and uh, the, the mind has to be pure, the mind has to be pure, for the mind to be pure, has to be pure in, in action. And, uh, you know, if we want to be pure in action, we have to maintain the purity, sadachar, of eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. Uh, this is whole thing that we have to, but the, the very point of it is that if we want to be preachers, we have to be pure. Otherwise, uh, what will happen, we will uh, preach to other people, but and we will want something from these other people or from this preaching. <coughs> what it can be, it can be, you know, I'm such a great preacher. 
look, so many people surrender unto me. <laughs> I have so many followers who are, you know, who are really, oh, or you will try to exploit your followers, or you will want to have some honor among the brahmacharis. Look, I am the best preacher out of all of you, and I can distribute more books than all of you. And this is all dirt. This is all something which is actually, uh, which actually uh, constitute violence. The preaching is uh, the realization of non-violence, Prabhupada said. What is the preaching? The real preaching is that uh, if it's done in compassionate spirit, it means that uh, you are really uh, trying to relieve this particular soul from the violence. This is the, the proper uh, realization or the proper manifestation of this principle of Ahimsa, preaching. Prabhupada explains this in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, the preaching means that you're non-violent. If you're not preaching, you're violent. <laughs> because you're letting uh, you know, all these people to suffer in, in the uh, cycle of birth and death. Uh, but if we preach and the motivation is not proper, we're also violent. Because the motivation will be to exploit such a person, to get some resources, to get some prestige, or to get even to get appreciation from him. You know, sometimes we are enthusiastic to preach. Why? Because we get appreciation. <laughs> if this is the motivation, if this is the contamination within our motivation, then uh, our preaching will not be uh, as effective. Everything else is techniques. You know, there is no point of speaking about techniques. Techniques may be different, but the real essence of preaching is that uh, you know, the purity of the purpose, the purity of the motivation, which comes through hearing. If we hear again and again, again with proper motivation, why do I hear? I hear, why do I want to hear? I hear because I want to purify my heart. Because I want to get some experience which I don't have now at the moment. Because I want to see uh, Krishna in every page of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Therefore, I'm, I'm hearing. If I hear with this, because sometimes, oftentimes, I know it myself. This is my confession in front of all of you. Why preachers hear other preachers? Because they want to get some nice points from their preaching. To use them in their preaching. You know, some nice stories or some nice points or whatever, and then somehow or other include them in the preaching, you know, oh yeah, this is nice, very nice, very nice, let me note it down. <laughs> but this is wrong motivation. This is, this is passionate, this is rajasic motivation. Yeah, I want to use it for myself ultimately, because we're all preachers here. And uh, there are some difficulties in being professional preachers. Professional preacher means you always want to know something new, because you want to speak something new, <laughs> which is not necessarily based on your uh, realization. And therefore, you know, to, to make your message attractive, you, <laughs> you want to make some points. And this is exactly what Prabhupada says when he says, you shouldn't screw out new meanings of the text. Because sometimes, you know, to say something new or something attractive or something, uh, you know, beautiful, we, we try to get into these things. But no, this is not the point. The point is that uh, we have to be very conscientious as far as our uh, hearing process is concerned. Because without hearing, we cannot be preaching. You know, sometimes people are very enthusiastic about preaching, but not very enthusiastic about hearing. And that's exactly what uh, Prabhupada explained about his relationship with Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati. He said, sometimes I didn't understand what, Bhakti, what he was saying, because his style of speaking was very elevated and was very, you know, very scholarly. And Prabhupada said, oftentimes I didn't understand what he was saying, what he was speaking. 
but I was hearing with rapt attention. And he appreciated it very much. He said, he can hear nicely, therefore he will be able to preach. That was the criteria by which Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati practically predicted the future of Srila Prabhupada. Just this one qualification, he can hear nicely. He hears with, with, with great interest, because what is interest uh, within our heart? The interest within our heart is this digestion fire, which will digest what we heard and turn it into our realization. Give us the energy. You know, like food, if we take food and food is not digested, the food turns into what? Into poison. It doesn't give any energy. It doesn't give us uh, anything. So in the same way, we can hear a lot. But if there is no digestion fire within our mind uh, toward the matter of which we are hearing, it will not be digested. It means it will not become our realization. And it will become just either mechanical repetition or uh, we will be exploiting this thing for uh, our own benefits and this and that. But if you hear with rapt attention, it becomes yours. <laughs> it becomes uh, realized. And uh, when you realize it and when you speak, the other people will be influenced, will be uh, profoundly influenced in what you are talking. Therefore, and that's, that's a very important point which is, uh, which is given here. And, um, you know, the main um, principle of preaching is that you do what you preach yourself. And because I said that the lecture should be short, I have to stop the lecture now. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> My preaching will not be effective. <laughs> I said that, that, uh, <laughs> that the lecture should not exceed half an hour, and I'm already preaching for more than one hour. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to stop now. Some people are already tortured by, <laughs> by my topic. So anyway, I said enough. Mm, you know, I said enough for myself to digest it, and for you to digest it. So maybe we should answer one or two questions, if there is. And then it's, like Prabhupada said, what does it mean? You know, he is very excited, the whole, uh, this purport and this uh, next purport is about yathadi tam yathamati. Uh, when uh, Sutta Goswami says that yatha adhitam, how I have heard it, how I have learned it, and yatha mati, how I realized it. Uh, and Prabhupada explains this, of course, that uh, this, is, this is what preaching means. First we have to hear, and then uh, if we hear properly, realization will come, and the realization uh, if we digested the subject matter, the realization will make us speak in an interesting manner. Make the subject matter about Krishna attractive. As I said in the beginning, uh, Kali Yuga, that's the weapon of Kali Yuga, makes the garbage attractive. In Kali Yuga, uh, the, the main thing, you know, there are so many stuff, and uh, they try to package it in a very nice way. All the companies which are uh, producing some garbage, they say that uh, the part of the product is the package. They are packaging it in a very attractive and nice way so that the foolish people of Kali Yuga would buy this, and uh, nobody actually cares what is inside. Everyone is... Uh, caring what is outside. <laughs> so, uh, and to fight with this tendency, we have to make our preaching also nicely packaged. Like Patri Prabhu, he is the best thing, he is always packaging it in a very nice way. <laughs> so, but we have to give the essence, of course, but it has to be attractively packaged. Uh, for that, Ayat Hamati, for that realization has to be there. 
if the realization will be there, you will be able to package it nicely without <coughs> changing the essence of the message. As Prabhupada says, the original purpose should be maintained, uh, but uh, it has to be packaged nicely. So, thank you. I, I cannot control my tongue. <laughs> Nice Maharaj hearing the topic of hearing from you. Would you like to take some questions? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one of the points you said about the uh, uh, preacher is he should have the purity of purpose. That also refers to intention, motivation. So now motivation resides in the heart and uh, it is difficult for us to access there directly and, and to set it right. Maximum we can go till intelligence and we can set, we can like change the way we think. But intention or motivation it's little deeper. So how do we, you know, reach to the purity of purpose? So association. <clears throat> Uh, whatever we cannot access, uh, yes, you are exactly right. The intelli intellectual things, they may be there, but uh, in the deeper layers of our mind, uh, in subconscious layers of our mind, the motivations are there. And motivations may be hidden even from ourselves sometimes, because they are not in the sphere of the conscious mind. The conscious mind, we may think that I want this or I want that, but in reality we want uh, something else. Uh, but we can purify <clears throat> uh, on a deeper level. Therefore, this association, uh, especially the close association uh, with people <clears throat> who are uh, pure in, in their motivations, uh, when we open our heart, you know, <clears throat> when we hear, uh, it's very important to open our heart to the message which we hear, because this is also association. Association means hearing also. But <clears throat> uh, we're hearing on the intellectual level, we understand the logic, we understand the little points. But uh, if we also uh, open up our heart a little bit more, uh, on an emotional level, then we will be able to receive the emotion, the emotional message which is coming from the speaker. And uh, this emotional message will go deeper, uh, not will stay in the conscious mind, it will go to our subconscious mind and purify it there. This is how it works. <clears throat> but for that, the association has to be close. And closeness of association is determined by the trust. If there is a trust, uh, <clears throat> then uh, we can let the sound vibration go deeper. If there is no trust, then it will only remain on the level of the intellect. Uh, therefore, it is, uh, it is recommended that we accept spiritual master because it means that we have trust to him and we hear spiritual master. It's more effective because we have some additional points. You know, if we hear somebody else, it may be nice, uh, it, it's good, but when we have deeper and closer relationship, uh, uh, then the message can go much deeper and can purify on a deeper level because of this element of trust, implicit trust which is there. Then we can be open to this message. Otherwise, we, we will be closed on the, on the level of conscious mind and it will not go to subconscious layers of our... Hmm? So, uh, the people whom we trust, from them when we hear, the, like we can get a deeper change. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and usually we trust to people with whom we have relationship. You know, as far as the, uh, you know, if, uh, it's of course one thing to hear spiritual master, and we do have relationship with spiritual master, naturally. 
And we want to have relationship. We want to strengthen this relationship. But otherwise, you know, if we have relationship, close relationship, uh, and we see how person lives and whatever, we develop trust in him. And uh, therefore, his words will be more effective. We will be influenced. And uh, sometimes this question arises, you know, we see somebody, brahmachari, who undergoes some difficulties, and, uh, and the question is uh, how we can try to help him. The only way to help him is, is if you have relationship with him. If you don't have relationship with him, no matter, you may say very nice thing to him. He will not hear. It will not go deep because he will be closed. He will not be able to influence. That's the point. So if there is relationship, then there is, because relationship based on trust, any relationship which is there based on trust. And uh, uh, to break the relationship, you know, it means to break the trust. Why relationship are broken between husband and wife or whatever? Because the trust is broken. So relationship is not there. Uh, so through the relationship, we can hear deeper. Yes. I spoke about this for the whole lecture, <laughs> that we should hear and we should not hear garbage. That's basically the essence of what I said. <clears throat> Purity means, you know, to lead the pure life and to have pure association. Because the most <clears throat> contamination, is, it comes through the association. <clears throat> it means gross association, like association with the food, <clears throat> but of course, you know, in Kali Yuga, there is no pure food. You know, if you think that you're taking, you know, vegetarian food, some rice from the, from the store, you know, this rice is already not pure. <laughs> because how it was grown, how it was sold, how it is, you know, everything. So, so much garbage is there. So... We can forget about purity of you know, food and the purity of air and the purity of water. But at least we can associate with pure people as much as possible. That should be our conscious endeavor to associate with pure people and uh, stop ourselves from associating with all this uh, from expanding our association with all this contamination of Kali Yuga, which especially goes through the internet. You know, in the internet, you, nowadays you can get all kinds of garbage. Easily, no problem. <laughs> Thank you for the class with lovely realizations. It was really nice to hear you. So Maharaj, you mentioned about uh, when we eat food and the digestion fire is not proper, it becomes poison. Similarly with hearing. So what does that fire of digestion uh, uh, in that context of hearing? Yeah, as I said, <clears throat> attention, interest. Even when you eat food, and you're inattentive, your mind is somewhere else, you're distracted, uh, you're like emotionally affected by something and you cannot put your attention in what you're doing, uh, it will not be digested. Even to digest the normal food, you have to be attentive. And I said particularly that the interest, but interest is something which makes you attentive to what you hear. If you have the interest, if you, if, if you have this internal realization that, you know, I need to understand 
the message of Srimad Bhagavatam very deeply and therefore I have to hear. And that will, uh, you know, help you to digest it. Basically, the attention and attention comes from, from the taste, from the, from this, from the interest. Therefore, uh, <clears throat> Sanskrit word ruchi, which means, as we know, taste, uh, also means interest. Uh, and ruchi uh, literally means the glow, the effulgence, ruchi. So uh, something becomes attractive or effulgent for us. Like when there is, you know, and something is glowing, uh, it immediately attracts our attention. So if, if the subject matter is, is glowing for us, of Srimad Bhagavatam, if we have this understanding that this is something, uh, then, then we will be able to hear it properly. And that will be the fire of digestion. It doesn't matter here. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, you said uh, regarding realizations. So many times we hear lecture, many times we read the books. We also get some kind of conclusions, this, this should be realized. But over a period of time, those things also get covered and we may forget also. And some things in our life keep on reminding, they, they should be like this, they should be like this. The realization means it should be continuously flowing, or it's never get covered by something else. Or how, how we can understand? Uh, realization means something which, uh, which you will turn into your own action. Realization, if, if you know theoretically something, you're not, nece you're not necessarily will act upon this knowledge. Uh, <laughs> there is one little story which I tell. Uh, uh, what is the difference between the deeper realization and uh, uh, the um, superficial realization, so to speak? Uh, once in India, and, and there was uh, a minister and a king uh, in, in some kingdom. And this minister, he spoke many, many languages. And he spoke these languages so perfectly that nobody could really understand what is his mother tongue. Uh, he was speaking every language with the proper accent, everything was so perfect, and uh, many people were trying to find out where he, what, what was his source, what was his mother tongue, and nobody could, could do it. And then <clears throat> uh, one other uh, minister, he devised a, a trick how to do it. And uh, when it was dark, he was, you know, he attacked him. And at that moment, he started crying in his mother tongue. <laughs> because the samskara, the realization was the deepest. The purport of this little story is that when you are in a critical situation, that whatever you realized will be, uh, will be your action. You know, if you realize some spiritual truths and you are in a critical, if you are in a comfortable situation, you may pretend that you know this. You may be, you, you will be speaking yourself, you will be teaching others, you will be doing this and that, and everyone will say, oh, he's so realized. No, no, wait when you have critical moments. <laughs> <laughs> then only your realization will be shown to yourself. And Krishna, he, uh, sometimes we are an illusion because we are so, as a preachers, we are so used to speak this highly elevated philosophy and we think that uh, I already realized this. Uh, and Krishna, for sure, he will show you what you realized or not. He will, <laughs> he, he will arrange a situation in your life uh, which, will, which will be, sh uh, this situation will show to yourself and to others to a certain extent. What is the level of your realization? And the real test will come when we will be dying. So many people have crisis of faith. And I mean, it's natural. It's natural to have, this is a very difficult thing. We should not be, you know, we should not be 
proud or whatever, should not be, uh, should not condemn such people. It will be a very difficult time, but ultimately, you know, we have to go through this test as well. <laughs> that will, that will be, that will show the extent of your realization, the most difficult period when, when you are leaving the body. Hare Krishna, this was a very wonderful class on hearing rapt attention. Uh, I have two questions. First part is, uh, uh, when it comes to hearing, on the, uh, our, uh, <coughs> there is a level of trust and a level of respect. So, when we are hearing from speakers, like, uh, what is the Gradation of the level of respect and level of trust. This, uh, these two things are like. <coughs> See, <coughs> therefore, <coughs> it's the same thing. Therefore, the word shraddha means trust and the word shraddha means respect. <coughs> It's synonymous, and Prabhupada sometimes he explains Shraddha, this, uh, this meaning is not there in English word faith. <coughs> but we know Shraddha Shabda Vishvaso, Kahi Sudrida Nishchai. Shraddha Shabda means trust, Vishwas, and Shraddha Shabda, Srila Prabhupada very often he explains that this is the original meaning of Shraddha means respect. If you see somebody and you feel natural respect to him, you know, if you see a person and you see his qualities somehow or other attract you, he's a dignified person, like Prabhupada, he was, you know, he was attracting people just by his presence. He was, he had this powerful presence, you know, influence, he was so grave. Uh, and, uh, uh, people would have respect, and respect would mean that they would hear him with rapt attention. Because when we have respect, then we will hear. Then this is the person who has to say something very important. <clears throat> people see somebody and uh, they feel, somehow or other, they feel the level of realization. It, it may not be clear all the time, but somehow or other we can see, it transpires. Like uh, Srila Radhanath Maharaj, he once told me that when he was first saw Prabhupada's picture, it was way before he met uh, Prabhupada and it was uh, during this one feast, somebody was giving this, uh, Gunagrahi Maharaj actually was giving the um, fruit salad and he gave him this little booklet or brochure uh, uh, from Prabhupada, who is crazy, as far as I remember. And, um, and there was a picture of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, Srila Radhanath Maharaj told me that the first thing, when I saw this picture of Prabhupada, I said, he said, there was this thought in my mind. If there is a person in this earth who experiences spiritual bliss, this is the person. <laughs> this is the understanding which, or realization which came to him just by seeing Prabhupada, his picture. <clears throat> he, could, he could see, you know, that there is something going on inside this person. So, and immediately you, you develop respect, and when you develop respect, it means trust. It means respect and trust is the same. Respect, trust, Face is the same thing, it's synonymous. When, when respect becomes deeper, then it turns into implicit trust. You know, initially, uh, you cannot expect complete trust in the beginning. Initially, you can expect uh, respect, you know, if somebody, if you see. Uh, therefore, it's so important. It's, um, you know, 
to start relationship, when the relationship become mature, they, they become trustful relationship. But to start relationship, you, you should start with respect. Even if it's among the brahmacharis. If you want relationship, first respect has to be there. If there is no respect, there will be no relationship. There will, there will never be trust. You know, first is respect. Second part of the question is, uh, is uh, we all, sometimes we have certain uh, aspects in bhakti which uh, we time and again do it and it nourishes us. And uh, we choose a speaker in such a way that the speakers have to also have the same thing that uh, what we do. <coughs> so, uh, how to, uh, whether it is right or uh, how to come out of this? Like, what we we ask the speaker to do what we want. Oh. It means when, when, when we are hearing uh, yeah. personally or uh, when we try to hear, we selectively hear that part which will attract us and try to, means the mind uh, correctly focuses that because that's what you are practicing and that was enhances you and it will <coughs> very nicely gives up, gives up the other aspects which is also an inclusive part of the bhakti. Mm. <coughs> That's called selective hearing, when we only hear what we want to hear. When we don't really hear, when we listen to somebody, we don't hear everything which he has to say, but we only hear what, what confirms what we already know or what we convinced ourselves. This is your uh, question, right? So that's called selective hearing, and why the selective hearing is there? <coughs> Uh, you know, we already have some samskaras in our mind. And what is actually attractive to us? Uh, the, something which is attractive or have taste, has taste for us is only something which we already have experience of in our mind. The samskaras are there. So when we hear again something which we know, uh, you know, the samskara becomes uh, enlivened. Yes, 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 yes. And then when we hear something which we don't know, the, we become bored, you know. What is he talking about? I don't know, you know, what is it? <laughs> so, and therefore this selective hearing takes place. We only hear what we already know. And therefore this type of hearing is useless because we don't hear anything new. <laughs> uh, we, we deprive ourselves, by this selective hearing, we deprive ourselves the chance uh, to, to understand something new which we don't know, because we only want to hear something which, which is already more or less known to us. Therefore, Prabhupada says, you know, we have to somehow or other to get this rapt attention, then the change will be there. We will hear something else, you know. Therefore, initially, rapt attention should be there. Then the interest will develop gradually. You know, th that's the difficulty. In the beginning, we have to have rapt attention without having interest, which is normally difficult. When we have interest, the rapt attention is natural. But, uh, you know, Prabhupada says, from the very beginning, you have to have rapt attention, <laughs> even if the interest is not there. So I, that, that means little force, little, you have to force your mind. Then it, then it will very easily come, the realization will, will be easily coming. Yes. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for this lecture. So my takeaway, primary two takeaway points from this lecture is, preach with realizations, and realization comes with hearing. And the second takeaway is uh, present what Prabhupada has said as it is. But I have a small clarification regarding the second part. <coughs> there have been instances where Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada highlighted, uh, he took the case of uh, the little Saraswati, and he asked him, who is the Supreme Personality of God? Who is Krishna? And she said, Krishna is Supreme Personality of God. So my question is, a child may not have realizations, 
But Prabhupada often stressed uh, that you just present the things as it is and your preaching will be perfect. So how to understand this? Especially when we are training new preachers, they are already hesitant that we don't have any realizations. We say, just present what Prabhupada has to say. So how to understand this? Thank you for this thoughtful question. <coughs> Yeah, as far as I know, Saraswati didn't make many disciples and her preaching didn't make many people follow Krishna. But nevertheless, she was pure in her preaching. So, uh, you know, there is preaching and there is preaching, basically. <clears throat> you can preach the message of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam purely when you repeat uh, but uh, you shouldn't expect that it will have much effect. It's still, it's still good. It's purifying for yourself. It will be purifying for people. But the effect may be less. Therefore, you know, when, when it comes to new preachers, you know, this, this sort of preaching is mostly for them. Because when they repeat the same thing, the realization comes. It's beneficial for them. Uh, therefore, for us, preaching is a method of bhakti, you know. It's a method of spiritual development. It's our practice. We do preaching as sadhana, you know. And for sadhana, we know, we, we may not have, you know, great realizations ourselves. Uh, for sadhana's sake, we have to do it. Therefore, Prabhupada established this, that every devotee should give Bhagavatam class it doesn't matter whether and uh, we have to come to Bhagavatam class and to hear other people speak. So that's good. That's, uh, you know, we repeat the same message. Uh, there is a joke in Russian at least. The um, teacher is complaining about his students. The teacher says, I repeated this, uh, you know, once. And I said this once, I repeated this twice, I repeated three times. I already uh, understood myself and still they couldn't understand. <laughs> so this is what happens with the preacher. <laughs> you repeat it once, you, twice, three times. You realize it yourself and these dull people don't understand still. This is how it works. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your wonderful realizations. <clears throat> um, you mentioned very wonderful point regarding uh, the purity of the purpose in uh, preaching. And uh, many times we may have uh, other motivations which may be there with which we preach. And uh, actually we were mentioning that actually is a violence. The preaching is supposed to uh, alleviate the violence, but if you are preaching with other motivations. So Maharaj, uh, we may have heard this multiple times, but at the same time, uh, also to avoid such uh, other motivations, we may sometimes avoid some things which are like limelight services. Uh, but at the same time, the desire for prestige is still, uh, it is it doesn't go away. Though we may we might be doing we may externally uh, at least myself I may say externally that I am doing it for as an order, but still the desire is uh, there. To be in a limelight. Yeah. So uh, what uh, things that we must do, Maharaj? Uh, see, this ulterior motivation may be there, uh, but uh, if you have primary motivation, which you will have if you have taste for this, uh, then uh, they will be more or less overshadowed by this primary motivation. In other words, if you have taste, uh, if you really like preaching, uh, and if you enjoy preaching, and uh, you know, you may for some time, for the time being, forget about other motivations because it's uh, pleasurable in itself. Like Bhakti Chara Maharaj, he used to call that there are, we know that there are five rasas, and he says there is a sixth rasa, it's preaching rasa. <laughs> the taste. Uh, 
so you know this other motivations they only uh, because you you have the taste from you know glorification or you have the taste of being in the limelight you have the taste for this and that but if preaching itself uh, gives you taste uh, and uh, then other things will not be so important ultimately because you will do it because you just want to preach because it's so nice because krishna is so nice because you you know you while saying this you also uh, get some realizations it's also a very important uh, point uh, again uh, repeating the same point it's like you know dhruva maharaj he wanted to speak something about krishna Krishna is standing in front of him, Vishnu is standing in front of him, uh, but he can't speak anything. And then, you know, Vishnu touches his head with his uh, conch shell, and all of a sudden the speech uh, goes, flows from his mouth. So, when we speak, when we can experience the same phenomena, all of a sudden we say something and, you know, we don't know where it's coming from. I didn't, I didn't really, and it's coming from the higher source. Uh, you know, it's uh, the Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada calls uh, these moments uh, Gobar Ganesh, he said that, uh, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he said that sometimes when we speak, you know, it, it's coming from the higher plane. Krishna is using us. Krishna gives us this. And therefore it's, it's such an exciting and, uh, you know, important activity when we uh, speak. And ultimately, by experiencing this again and again and again, we will get the purity of purpose because we will like to do it for the sake of doing it, not for the sake of uh, getting something out of it. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Antarachi Bhagavatam ki jai. I'm a bit about the green, the key, John.